Okay, so we're talking about details of the rank sum test. We talked about what to do if there's a tie. We talked about why we're just using the sum of the ranks in one group as opposed to the difference in mean ranks. So let's move back to what we were initially talking about. Why would we do a rank test at all? This comes up whenever you have censored data. And this is very common in medical studies. If you're looking at something like time until somebody dies, time until next hospitalization, time until a relapse, time until a cure. At some point you have to stop collecting data and at that point not every person, every unit in the study will have totally resolved their medical case and that will lead to censored data. But you could also have censored data if for example these are measurements of how long it takes people to do some task, right? And it could be anything. Maybe we are um, asking a bunch of students to complete some sort of memory task and we're timing them to see how long it takes. And one person takes zero minutes and one person takes three minutes, one person takes seven minutes, and somebody else is still thinking about it when 12 minutes are up and that's when we decide to say, okay, let's just move on. And so that person's values are censored. We don't know how long they would have taken. Similarly, if we were interested in how long people take to run a mile, right, there might be some people who just don't finish within the data collection time, those values would be censored. So the censoring is a fairly common phenomenon, and this is the simplest and one of the best ways to deal with that. Because again, you can't just take the mean of at least 12. When else would the rank sum test be useful? Suppose we didn't have censoring, but that instead of a 12 there, we had a 12,000. Maybe these aren't months lived anymore, but regardless, our data set could look like this. We could have a 3 and 7 in one group and a 0 and a 12,000 in the other group. Any answer we get if we just do a straightforward randomization test is going to be completely driven by this huge outlier, right? If I take the average or the sum of this number with anything else, it's pretty much going to be right back to this number. This number will completely drive our results. We don't want our answers to be completely driven by some huge outlier. But if I transform these numbers into ranks, it's still one, two, three, four. This is still just the highest number. And so the rank sum test, turning all the values into their ranks, is also a great way to deal with outliers. To do a test that does not require you to just eliminate the outliers, but also is not too influenced by the outliers. This is a somewhat resistant test, it's called. And we'll come back to that term as we go on. This rank sum test is resistant to outliers because the results won't change regardless of whether this number is 12, 120, 1200, or 12,000, 12 billion. We'll get the same answer. Now, that again means we're losing a little bit of information because we're not taking into account whether this number is 12 or 12 billion, but our answer is also not overly influenced by the fact that we have an outlier. Like all randomization tests, the rank sum test is appropriate if we have a very small data set because we don't have to make any assumptions that anything follows a normal distribution or anything like that. This is appropriate for small sample sizes, appropriate for censoring, and appropriate for outliers.